Welcome to Eye Contact. I'm Nick Reus and I'm talking to, to Dr. Boris Maljugan about performing complex cataract surgery. Welcome, Boris. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, nice to meet you, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all cataract surgery is, is, is complex, uh, but there are the particularly difficult cases that really challenge the surgeon. Uh, what are the risk factors we should look out for that might alert us to potential problems, you think? You know, Nick, I think that the term complex is uh, quite relative. Mm -hmm. You know, what is considered uh, complex for the resident might be not so for the experienced cataract surgery. Uh, so, first of all, it's a kind of, you know, broad thing, but uh, definitely we need to have a good and clear visualization of what we, what we are doing. So, the clarity of optical media uh, is a very important thing, mm -hmm. and any opacities uh, make the surgery complex. Also, uh, the instability of the tissues, uh, and like zonules or uh, iris, uh, so make uh, the surgery um, quite challenging. So, and there are all other comorbidities, uh, 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 including hereditary, traumatic. So what, what is uh, uh, changing the anatomy, uh, the regular anatomy of the anterior segment, mm -hmm. uh, usually makes, uh, whether it's iris defect or zonular defect, make the surgery complex. Yes, and at, at least different. Uh, and depending on your experience, it may make it complex. Yeah, but luckily we do have a lot of uh, uh, instrumentation now that help us in, in that such as CTRs or um, advanced FECO machines mm -hmm. with uh, very good fluidics, viscoelastics, special lenses. So we are, I think we are well equipped for uh, complex cataract surgery. Yes. And, um, with regard to, to, to the pupil and, and complex cataract surgery, uh, what do you think the role of intracameral mediuretic agents is in, in complex cataract surgery? I think the, the, this is a very important uh, uh, addition to our surgical armamentarium. And as uh, I, I entered my ophthalmology residency maybe 30 years ago, and since then we were using intracameral mediuretic uh, mm. phenylephrine. And we continue doing that uh, now with uh, uh, available, commercially available uh, solutions, yes. which didn't happen before. So I think that this is a must uh, in every surgical room. So we need to have it and use it sometimes, not only in the very complex cases, but mm -hmm. uh, a more or less regular one, because they add to pupil dilation that you can get from preoperative medication. And uh, with regard to, to pupil uh, dilation. Uh, some people use extra uh, medication like adrenaline, epinephrine in their balanced uh, salt solution. Um, personally, I have to say I, I don't use that anymore. Um, how do you feel about, about using that? I think there are two basic concepts. First is a bolus injection when you inject the mediatic agent at the very beginning of the surgery, right after paracentesis. Mm -hmm. And the second one is a constant irrigation uh, and constant supply to the anterior chamber mm. of uh, mediuretic agent. I'm personally more in favor of the first one because at least the, uh, the available medication, they are not very helpful in uh, adding uh, dilation to the pupil. They are yeah. keeping the pupil in, in the dilated state. Mm. So what we want to achieve is that if you start with the surgery and see that the pupil is not uh, uh, well dilated, so you want it to expand more. And for that, bolus injection uh, works best for me. So I'm not uh, using um, any mediatics in, in the irrigation solution. And, and if the surgery would take, uh, probably your surgery is, 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 is very short, but if you have a resident doing performing surgery, uh, you can always repeat the bolus injection of your mediatic agent. Theoretically, yes, but in, and in practice, uh, uh, actually, it's not uh, the repeated injections, at least in my hands, uh, were not as successful as, as, as the first as one. The first so, one. Yeah, so it might be probably the, something with bounding the receptors. Mm. And uh, there are several other reasons for uh, meiosis during the surgery, like prostaglandin release. And mm. so there are uh, different mechanisms uh, that are involved. So yes. basically, I'm not in favor of adding. Uh, um, it will not act as good as, ad, as the yes, first injection. Correct. correct. Okay. Um, when intracameral mediatic agents are not doing the job, uh, you now have many surgical options. Uh, can you please tell us about your ring, the Malhuman ring, and how you came to create it? 
Yeah, it, I think this is, uh, uh, at least what is in my hands works best is, uh, is a ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know uh, from several publications uh, confirming that the, the concept of uh, using ring uh, for stabilizing the iris in, uh, for instance, floppy iris syndrome or expanding it in a very extremely small pupil is uh, very effective as opposed to the iris hooks. And the surgery are much shorter, uh, and uh, that's why uh, people love love using it. Easiness of handling is one of the most important thing. And I start uh, using it uh, quite a long time ago, and mm -hmm. the concept comes from the scroll uh, principle, uh, because we did uh, had uh, the IOL having uh, polypropylene optical element with a scroll, and yes. occasionally you can catch the iris you can catch the capsule with that scroll yes and uh, from that uh, and the then you saw that the pupil dilated yeah, and the pupil the dilated was, was yeah, against yeah, that, the, that's the pupil right. margin so it comes uh, so inventions come from uh, obser observing that uh, issue and, yes and, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, complicated issues so you have to look yes. around and there are many things around you that can give you an ideas and uh, then you have to implement them in practice oh that's really nice mm -hmm. great and and um have you used other rings than, than, than the Mayugan ring? Uh, for yes, yourself? of course, I use them all. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, first of all, I was curious and uh, interested. And by the way, um, I enjoyed using them uh, mm -hmm. because uh, all of them are eff can effectively expand the pupil and keep them in dilated state. Mm -hmm. um, all of them have some technical uh, dif dif differences uh, one from another, and mm -hmm. you have to learn and master the techniques. And as far as you uh, master them, you can use them quite effectively. I don't, I don't want to, s to uh, say in favor of one of the other device. Um, I, I, I do believe that the surgeon has to have options and have uh, okay. opportunity <laughs> to use uh, any device he's comfortable with, because it's the most important thing that you, during the surgery you have to be calm and comfortable, yes. especially in the stressful uh, situation of complex cataract surgery. So, and you are comfortable when you get used to uh, whatever device you're using. Yes. And that's uh, whether it's hooks or rings, or one design or the other design. So as far as you know it works for you, you yes. do the best for the patient. Well, that's very good advice. And, and, and um, we have been doing uh, phaco surgery with, with uh, manually uh, for ages. And now you see the development of, of femtosecond laser uh, assisted cataract surgery. Uh, do you see any advantages, uh, advantages to using this laser uh, in, in any stage of the complex cases? Oh, I, I do uh, think that specifically femtosecond laser have a good uh, room for mm -hmm. uh, complicated cataract surgery. For instance, in patients when there is a zonular weakness, uh, uh, it's uh, not so easy to create capsulorexis because of the instability of the capsule. So by applying a laser mm -hmm. uh, to the capsule, you, you do not have any stress on the uh, residual zonal apparatus and yes. you can ac uh, actually create very nice round capsulotomy of whatever size and location you need to. And I, I do think that prefragmentation mm -hmm. uh, may also help, yeah. uh, again, not only to reduce the amount of ultrasonic energy, but also to reduce the amount of manipulations uh, that are needed uh, during that uh, complex surgery. So I, I love using uh, this device in patients uh, with um, zonular pathology. And by the way, small pupil is not an issue anymore for femtosecond because I actually use it prior to femtosecond laser. Uh, you put in a, a ring? Yeah. Yes. yes. So my approach is that I do a two millimeter incision, only okay. one. Yes. Uh, then inject uh, dispersive OED, mm -hmm. uh, inject the ring, the second version that goes easily through the 2.0 millimeter incision. Okay. And then uh, I suture that incision with a single 10 zero nylon uh, suture. Okay. I leave uh, dispersive OVD in the anterior chamber, mm -hmm. uh, checking uh, that there are no air bubbles uh, entrapped oh, in because they, they can 
uh, deviate the laser energy. Yes. And then I play, uh, I apply laser and okay. then go back and do whatever steps is needed. So I don't think it's uh, that the small pupil is uh, a contraindication anymore for uh, femtosecond laser. Yes, and you make those complex catheter cases much more standardized. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, great. And um, what innovations do you hope to see in, in, in the future for complex cataract surgery? I think uh, uh, there are many exciting uh, things, and specifically, I think uh, the uh, IOL fixation related because, you know, when mm -hmm. we do not have enough capsular support, this is where, when we are really struggling uh, um, uh, to achieve good results. Yes. And there are many options now for different uh, IOL designs that and different techniques so I, I think that uh, the latest years uh, gave us a lot of improvement in that direction such as Yamani technique and yes. the sutureless uh, fixation I think think that the in this direction uh, we will moving uh, in the, to a very safe and comfortable surgery and are, are you working yourself uh, on, on thing like that I, I mostly um, um, focused on on the devices that are used for uh, capsular fixation. So, okay. so this is a modified capsular tensioning that I use yes, uh, yes, yeah, indeed. Yes. for quite many years. And I uh, recently I switched from using 90 polypropylene. I'm not using anymore okay. because my experience show that the uh, this suture breaks. Okay. So I uh, using Gore-Tex, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's uh, currently my standard standard of care. Okay, to fixate the the uh, the capsular tensioning yeah. to the yeah, to, to the sclera. The, uh, to the sclera. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Boris, for this good interview. Uh, we learned a lot from you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, for more information, visit us at eurotimes.org.